Hi, I'm Michelle. And I'm Stephen. Welcome, Welcome to, to Ivy Bound, Bound LA. LA. This is an educational and parenting based podcast and YouTube channel that will be sharing conventional and not so conventional methods in guiding children to an Ivy League education. As we mentioned last week, today we'll be talking about private school versus public school and how you can afford it as well. Please hit the like and subscribe button and let's get right to it. So we need to talk about like statistics. Where did we get the, well, I love research. So I researched and if you Google and you look it up, it'll say private versus public school. Well, it was interesting to me to find out that the statistic said, uh, and I'm reading it, roughly 10% of students in the United States go to um, private. And so that's like 5 million attend private school versus 50 million public school um, kids. So what's the difference between private and public? As an educator, I could tell you based upon my experience of teaching in private school, but I'm gonna tell you what the statistics say. So there's the obvious that private school, they don't offer, uh, offer specialized services for children with learning differences. Um, public does, they're mandated to provide those support services for them. So that's the basic. And as far as that, but as when we go to private school, they have, um, they provide resources that maybe public school doesn't. According to NAIS, um, National Association Independent School and a Gallup show shows private school graduates have better long-term outcomes. So that's a research statistic. I'm going to leave the link of all of these where I got all of these um, statistics and my research um, down below so you can look at it. But private school historically has smaller classes and public school is bigger. Um, the difference is about 19 kids in private to public about 25. And of course it, it averages um, per state, per city, and in your state or city. But in general in California it's about, this is what I'm talking about, about 19 to 25 to even 30 sometimes for public school. So that's like the, the ratio. So right there you see the teacher to student ratio is different. Okay, so as an educator for me, to have 25 to 30 students, it changes the way I know those kids. I know them less intimately because there's just too many of them, okay? So that's, that's one thing. Another thing is why do, um, we'll talk about why we chose it, but uh, doing research, a lot of parents choose private over public for religious reasons, um, same-sex schools, such as, you know, private all-boys high school or private all-girls high school, um, and, just the individual attention. So that's that's some of the reasons why parents um, chose, but I looked up some deeper reasons and it, was, it came down to some supported benefits of private school versus public school. So one was more academic opportunity. So extracurricular activities that are offered in private school, sometimes they're not offered in public. And it's, it's because sometimes that funding gets cut in public school and private schools offer like art classes, music, and public schools do too, but they're able to offer more of these, um, Spanish and elementary school and immersion program. Um, and so those are some of the, the differences, but also test scores. So according to um, research there, that um, private school students tend to score higher on standardized tests, okay? Didn't give a reason why, but it, it just is. It, it's historically and still present today, they score higher. Um, and so it could be smaller class sizes, I don't know. You know, um, Parental involvement, that's another thing. So in, in private school, it's you have to do hours of uh, service. So that already deems that parents will be more involved. Versus public school, they don't mandate that. You can be in the parent association, but you don't have to be. And then lastly, one reason they get, they all, another reason was better access to resources. You know, um, and so I mentioned that, like extracurricular, um, which provides a more well-rounded um, student because they have all those things early on. So that's kind of the, the raw research, but instead of looking at raw research and data, and we asked ourselves, two questions, right? So we said, what type of schooling are we looking for for our sons? And then the second question is, what type of environment 
would we want them in? So that was that's the kind of two questions that we asked ourselves. Yeah, that brings us to what kind of um, the first piece of that was what kind of education school system we wanted to put our kids into. So we chose for us what worked for us was the private sector. One of the reasons why was the area we lived in, the schools didn't rank that high, you know, that, that highly. So if you recall in the last episode, you can go back to listen to that, where and it'll be posted up here. When you look back there, you will, you will hear the story on how we started this journey towards an Ivy League education. And one of the things that came up was, you know, access to um, a strong academic program. So for us, we worked very hard to put our kids in a, in a private school sector environment from K through 12. And uh, we'll talk more about how we funded that particular initiative in a little bit on, in this particular um, episode. But for us, it was the issue, like Michelle mentioned, it was the smaller class sizes. That brings a big positive approach to co-educating our kids with the teaching, you know, teaming up with the teachers and instructors, being a partner with them, as opposed to putting it all on their shoulders to actually um, educate our kids, which in turn will hopefully prep them for an Ivy League education in the future. Yeah, because e even though we put them in a the private sector, that doesn't mean that it's, they will be able to um, take advantage of all the academic rigor and all the different academical, academic um, advantages being in that environment. So a smaller class size was very instrumental on more one-on-one -on -one interaction with the teacher. And by us being involved and being present in, in working with the teacher, it gave the teacher the opportunity to actually directly have contact and communication with us, not just on parent-teacher nights, not just on special occasions or special events the school may be hosting, where, you know, my eldest son, who was, um, you know, he, he went to the public school sector, and I didn't hear much from, or we didn't hear much from the teachers and, and counselors and those different things until pretty much two or three times tops a year. So for us, we wanted more of a partnership with the instructors so we can actually help tailor their educational needs and to actually get work towards meeting our educational goals. You want to comment on the other side? Yeah, so it's interesting that you said that because as a private school educator, I know that I'm partnering with the parents. It's not, um, I'm teaching your child and that's it. And so that language even in private school is a little bit different between um, educator and, and parent. We're asking them to partner with us because who knows your child better than a parent themselves? So we ask them, tell us some things. How does your child best learn? Because parents often know those little secrets that an educator won't know and in private school we they ask you those things they want to know and that brings us to flexible learning yeah. so the, the, there's a certain level of encouragement that happens when you're in the private sector where you're actually collaborating closely with the instructor because you can be you can flex you could actually flex the education of i mean the uh the process of teaching to suit your kids better so for instance as an example when our boys were in fourth grade, Michelle would um, pre-front load, I call it front loading, she would front load the, for the next year's math prior to them joining fourth grade or, or graduating into fourth grade. So the summer, the summer before fourth grade, she would work with them on the upcoming math book for fifth grade. So what does that mean? So when we were able to work with the instructors at the school that we were going to, mind you, it's a very small Christian private school they were attending at the time. and by them being able to, by us being able to com uh, collaborate with the actual instructor, we were able to move them during the period of math. When it was time for math during the day, they would leave the classroom and go to the fifth grade class and join them for math. So we, ha we had to work with the different grades in that situation. A lot of times you will not have that kind of flexibility working in a, in a public school sector. But the main thing that we wanted to make sure, we wanted to boost up their math because everywhere you look, Math scores are very important. Science scores are very important. And reading is very important. If you want to talk more yeah, about that. Yeah, so one of the things that um, I did over the summer, as, as Steve said, is I worked with them. So there was no summers off. And like we said in the last episode, if you want to look at that one, um, we were looking for the results driven and not process oriented. And that was part of our process was look, um, seeing, not taking summers off, making summer academic for them. Um, and, and fun. And fun. <laughs> yeah. Academic and fun. But um, 
often on Saturdays they would go to my mom's house and they'd call it Nana's school and she would help them with the writing part. I would do the math and science and I would do experiments with them and I would also, like Steve said, look at the curriculum for um, the next year and that way when they saw it, it was almost like the second time they were learning it. Exactly, as a review. And we'll actually do an episode on summer learning for raising your kids to reach IB bound level of education in the future. So look forward to that in the future. But um, the other thing, one of the things that we mentioned was being well-rounded. And uh, you want to explain what you meant by being well-rounded? Yeah, so it, it's kind of a, um, and you'll hear colleges say that at college admissions, they talk about a holistic um, approach to education or a holistic um, student that they're looking for. And private school really offers that mm -hmm. because they uh, have science. They, um, Their particular private school, they had um, what you call electives at the end of the day. And so it included agricultural class, it included cooking, it included science. It, so it made them well-rounded. They they were touching every different aspect and that also led to figuring out what they were strong in too. yeah absolutely and we talked about last time being not being process driven but being results oriented in our last episode which will be up there again um you we talked about that how do you know what their strength what their strengths are in academically so how can you point them in that right direction based upon the success one of the other things we talked about a little bit was being confident and how important it is for your child to be academically confident to be able to handle whatever's thrown at them in the future academically. You want to talk more about the confidence level found in private yeah, school kids? So, um, because it's a small environment, and like I mentioned, the statistics talking about it, the teacher to student ratio being left, uh, less, it also lends to their confidence because they know their teacher a little bit more. And also, private school, not everyone gets accepted. So there is, um, it, you're handpicked, the kids there. So the peer influence is different because that school is creating the environment that they want of what type of students they want. So in general, um, you're going to have students who are like-minded in that in that school, in, the, in those grades. Um, and so that was one of the things that I said, the statistics talking about the environment. So that brings us to how do you fund something like this, which can be kind of daunting to figure out how you will pay for something like this. We could, all we could talk about is how we did it, and maybe that will help some suggestions on helping assist you guys on making those type of decisions for your children. Because one of the things we want to actually convey to everyone is there's ways of getting to these actual solutions for your children, and it's, it's going to take some sacrificing. Um, and we'll definitely talk about how we how we pulled it off with regards to funding a private school education from K through 12. So w one of the things mm -hmm. we did was, and and I started off thinking about this, and I and I thought of three words: time, talent, and treasure. So we va we valued um, our sons. They're our treasures. I mean, still to this day. And we knew that they were talented and we wanted to put our time in. And if you have that kind of mindset of like time, talent, treasure, it's almost nothing that you won't do to sacrifice. And so one of the th ways um, is that you look at what um, talents you have. So for example, Steve mentioned that in the first episode um, that he's an IT, right? And I am an educator. So those, that's our, our talent that we could give our time to a private school. So if you can't pay for it, we were willing to give our time to that school so that we could give our sons that treasure of a private school education. Um, like bartering services. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so actually, you know, I was thinking about a mom that I know um, that has three single mom, three boys, and she gave her talent. Her talent was um, she, agriculture. So she started the class at the private school and it was um, teaching the kids how to grow vegetables and um, nutritious vegetables and they would eat it and she would cook things with them and so she planted a whole garden at the, um, the oh, elementary just, school mm -hmm. and she was able to get a discount for her sons. Uh, there was another parent that I know that was good with marketing so she donated her time after hours then yet still another mom that I knew who really wanted both of her, her, her daughter and her son to go to that um, that private school. So she donated her talent, which was art. Mm. She did on the side. And so she did an art class and she would take an, an afternoon off from work and do an art class. And it wasn't every week, um, but that was her, her talent that she... 
Absolutely, absolutely. And one of the other ways that we were able to accomplish this was, as Michelle, as Michelle mentioned, she's a teacher. So an opportunity came for the boys' private elementary school to, uh, for neither the teacher, a science teacher, so she applied. And she got in, got the job. By her working at the school, that afforded us some uh, financial benefits, meaning student discounts, because she's an employee of the actual school. So the, the, the moral of the story is, don't take no for an answer. Just figure a way to work with the, your schools in your, in your local area and figure a way, like, like Michelle mentioned, use your talent towards assisting towards tuition assistance. Now, we couldn't afford, we have two kids, they're twins. And you know, so both boys in the tuition, I'm not certain Michelle can uh, tell you some of the ballpark spitball numbers of what tuition would be for what we paid elementary school wise, but it, regardless of which, it was two tuition checks had to go out every single month to support this educational goal for us. So what did we do? We found different ways of accomplishing that. Donating time. I'm an IT person, I'm a network engineer, so I would, try, I would actually pitch my services for the school to help strengthen their infrastructure, um, IT goals and needs, that kind of thing, All or you know, work volunteer times on the weekends to help the school with whatever they needed uh, help with. No task was above me because the goal was, the results we wanted was the boys to be able to attend that school. So we did whatever it took, we sacrificed ourselves, maybe we didn't go on vacations because we, we chose to invest in their education. So certain things that some people may say, well, you guys deserve to do, yeah, we deserve to do that, but we wanted, we were on a mission to um, educate our kids. So, you know, so we wanted to put them in a better position to be able to be successful, we wanted them to win win in this particular situation. So we did whatever we could to come become creative to put them in those environments. So you want to talk more about your teaching at the schools? Yeah, the so school? um, I was very involved in the school, obviously because I was a teacher there, but it also, um, I also tailored a lot of things towards what my sons were interested in because I was there at the school. So I beefed up, you know, the, the science program there. I donated my time even more than just teaching in the classroom to making sure the science and the math programs were good, the STEM. Um, and then when STEAM came of, of, evolved, um, where that was science, technology, ed, um, engineering, arts, and mathematics, and that's when that uh, mother came along and I suggested, why don't you do art? Um, because that was the holistic approach and that's what I wanted. So um, for my sons, but also for all of the students there. And so that, that was how I looked at it and saw what I could do, my talents, and still yet I was teaching there, but add to the school. Yeah, exactly. And then one of the things also we want to definitely briefly touch on was the fact that the system is in place for a reason, and the system is what it is, basically. So we, we talked, we chatted a little bit about this today earlier. It's one of those things that you can either find a way to work with the system, or you can try to fight the system. But at, at the end of the day, you want to make your child, like we wanted our kids to be in a position of power where they chose the school of their choice, not the school allowing them to say that, okay, you can come here. Because you know, we wanted them, we wanted them on, res, on paper to be so academically strong as well as well-rounded. We wanted them to be so strong on paper in their resume that all schools they apply to would want them. And then they will, become the, they will be in a position to say, okay, we don't want to go to that school for whatever reason. We want to go to this school because this is the school we want, we choose, not the school choosing them. <laughs> and you know, that, that being said, they were able to get, um, be accepted to the first school and the only school they applied to which happens to be Brown University. So I think it's, you know, we were talking about how we, mm -hmm. we've talked about the statistics of, of um, private versus public and, and the difference. We talked about why we chose it um, and what the finance, you know, how we sacrifice financially. Um, but I think it's very interesting how we can say as parents the difference between um, our oldest son and, and Miles mm -hmm. and Isaiah going to um, private school and what's the outcome of that and what the difference we could see from elementary, junior high, and even high school, Absolutely. the difference. You, yeah. What do you see? And then I could say what I see as well. Well, I'm not an educator and, uh, and our roles in this particular, in, in raising our boys education-wise, I leaned on Michelle a lot because she's the educator. It's her, it's her wheelhouse, it's her area of strength. So I was, 
I, I, I was more of a support system to what Michelle implemented. So for, you know, in different dynamics, different households have different dynamics, that kind of thing. So whoever's strong, again, we practice, we stay in our strength zone. <laughs> stay in our lane. <laughs> stay in your lane. <laughs> so I'm a former Marine, so I'm very much so, a, I, can, I can support, I can implement, I can go out there and blow stuff up, <laughs> you know? So we, I, I, I undergirded her and I actually, um, the boys' biggest cheerleaders, you know, and enforcing certain aspects of motivation to keep them pre keep them focused on the goal of being, a, you know, being competitive academically and in sports. So, when we talk about the differences, we know that. For, like, that's why I mentioned earlier, you know, when my eldest son was in the public school system, I wouldn't hear from them for months or weeks on hand, mm -hmm. you know, until I reached out and say how things are going or. Nowadays, it's a little easier because they have, you know, so we have um, uh, tools and util tools on our cell phone. We can actually uh, log into and monitor grades, that kind of thing, in mm -hmm. the public sector as well as the private sector. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you have to go seek that out as opposed to it just popping up, and, you know, and having that in dialogue on a regular, consistent basis in the private sector. So there's things that slip through the cracks when you're in the public system unless you're completely on it. I'm not saying that the public system doesn't work because we've met kids who are in the Ivy League that went through the public sector. So what, again, all we wanted to do was boost their chances to be a cut above the rest when they're looking at apples to apples and we wanted something to give a little person to say, hmm, what's this about? And cause those eyebrows to raise as they're reading their resume and hearing their stories. So back again, I know I went all over the place with this thing. but. Some of the differences I've noticed was the interaction between teacher and parent was not really that prevalent in the public sector as it was in the private sector. How about yeah. you? Yeah, the, a couple of things that I um, I noticed, and yes, it, my um, perspective as an educator. So as an educator, I can say first that um, I knew my students and, and the families. So I knew um, I would reach out to to um, the family. So for example, when I taught fifth grade, I knew one of my students was not feeling well and I could tell something was wrong. And why did I know? Because I was with them all the time. I knew my students very intimately. So it turned out there was um, a, a health issue and I knew it. That, um, and not just because I'm uh, a mom and I have that intuition that we have and you know what I'm talking about, but just because I knew the students well and I knew the, the family very well. Um, also, I, another thing I've noticed, you know, making comparison, I have nieces and nephews that go to public school ver and comparing them to our sons, um, I could see the level of, of confidence. And I think the, it's different because they, our sons have a sense of, I can do anything in, in this school because it's a small environment. So if they wanted to run for student council, chances are they would be on student council. If they wanted to, um, uh, play on a sports team, chances are they would be on that sport team because private school, less students, less chance of being cut from a team, more um, chances to be in student council, which brings me to a story of, a, of someone that we just met mm -hmm. recently um, who she was sharing with us that her daughter's at a public high school and she wanted to be the editor of a newspaper but couldn't get any of those things, not because she wasn't qualified, not because she's not extremely intelligent, it's just the impact of so many students at the school, she wasn't able to get that. And so when you level talk, competition. yeah, the level of competition. So um, the our sons never felt that, and that gave them confidence that they can do and take on any task that was given to them. And one more thing I mm -hmm. wanted to say is I remember when I was talking in the in the our first episode when I met the lady in the mm -hmm. mechanic store, she was talking about resume building that you start your your child's resume from fourth grade she's like oh okay so they they probably will do well in the act and then i said who thinks about the act in mm -hmm. fourth grade mm -hmm. but she was saying everything is building towards if it's not an ivy you know um league but a really good university of what you said mm -hmm. not being denied from any schools that they apply to so all of the things that private school does gives your child like a holistic. So when they're applying to colleges, that college says, oh, they went to a prep school or they did this or they traveled here or all the opportunities or they have and the list of things is just on and on because they were able to do that. And that's how our son's resume looked for college. It was just so many things that they did because the small environment and they were allowed to be able to do it. It's all about exposure. You know, it's one of those important things. Speaking of which, what if you can't afford private school? Which would be more important, 
private school for elementary or private school in high school? So on average, you're looking um, number wise, right? For elementary, it could be in anywhere from 10 to 16. There's even some that are like 30 something thousand in California for elementary school. And you could probably say the same for high school. I would say to those parents um, that if you, if you can't do that, save up the money that you would spend sending them to private school for elementary and put them in private school for high school. That was That was what I would say for sure, because I see how, yes, elementary is important, but um, having them in a private high school, I would say is much more important. And to piggyback on that, one of the things that I, I, we think about is when your kids are in elementary school, they're moldable. They're, you're actually helping them establish study habits, which is the, one of the most important things when they get to college is study habits and learning those study habit tricks and techniques early on. And we'll probably do an episode on study habits in you know in the, in the near future. Now, leave in the comments in below and ask any questions you want of things you may want to hear from us as well. So, we talk about private school for elementary kids. Now, if you're in, if you can't afford to pay for private school from day one all the way through high school, like Michelle mentioned, focus on the high school. But you will have to be even more so involved in uh, and and supplementing their educational needs needs and goals in elementary school so what kind of things would you think about how would you be able to help supplement a kid's elementary school um, goals academically well first and foremost i'd be very involved as a parent um and still i go back to that time talent treasure mm -hmm. that can that's applicable even to public school so if you're do, choosing public school for um um, elementary. for elementary, mm -hmm. then you still think of that time, talent, treasure. So what can you give your time? So be part of the PTA, be involved. Um, that way you know the principal. Um, give your talents. So if you have talents, make sure that talent you um, are volunteering in the classroom, you're the classroom mom, you um, volunteer grading papers or whatever the, the teacher needs. And definitely because you treasure your sons you want to, or your children, um, you want to be involved in everything like the sports and all of that and make sure that they're involved. So that's some of the things, it still goes back to that. I, 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 I think you would be remiss not to say it's still time, talent and treasure. You need to be present again. You know, a lot of times, you know, as a father, the more present I am within their education, within the early on education and, and their needs, it helps undergirds and, and boosts their their um, their confidence again. You, you know, we always go back to the word confidence. <laughs> so you help it support them, and then, you know, in, in those younger age, it could be this peer pressure. There's a lot going on with the kids that, but now, and you think about it, if you're there at the school during the time where the teacher may need your or need your support. If you're in front of the teacher all the time, even in public school, there's less chances that your kids would, be, would slip through the cracks. Because if anything happens, yep. the teacher would know, to, oh, your dad will be here tomorrow. I know, he's, I know your dad's going to be around. Because they knew, I mean, at, at, at my kid's school, they knew I was around. So the, the, the teacher knew that this, I could pop up at any given time, even in the pri private sector. So they know that we reinvested in their education by being there and being present and being involved. But they know they can leverage the parents to help support the kid with their with their um, academic needs and goals. The last thing I wanted to say is is you know we will talk about finances in a in a later episode if if you want to know exactly how the nooks and cranny of how we broke it down and you know because we did create a budget and we had to do all these things early on because we knew again that we wanted to sacrifice and so you know um but let us know if that's something that you want to hear but definitely it was a very intentional thing um and i think you know with parenting and going towards that goal of whether it's ivy league that was our goal or a really good college it's you have to be eyes wide open intentional parenting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um you know we, we didn't talk too much about high school but um you know for the boys high school it got very expensive again you know and actually as you can imagine they went to a college preparatory high school so that being said and we talked about all boys high school or co-ed high schools and that kind of thing and those are the kind of things that we uh, talked about the dynamics of what where the boys would be more successful and we chose, we went and chose a uh, all boys Catholic high school because for one thing, the academically was one of the most rigorous programs in our area that the boys were able to be involved with. And they had all the different dynamics of, we interviewed the schools 
when we chose them, we chose the school. We were enrolled in other schools, and we pulled out and we went to this other school, <laughs> basically. So, and we can, you know, we could, if you want to know more about that, we can actually leave a comment below and we'll talk more about that. But we, we treat high school and we brought our kids along with the, us throughout this entire journey, informing them throughout the way how we're, the, the mindset, the thought process of what we're doing, because we didn't feel, and correct me if I'm wrong, we didn't feel like, holding them away from the information was going to help them much. You know, I mean, we wanted, to, we wanted them to uh, making family decisions early on. And we talked about in the last episode about at our dining room table, we talked about everything under the sun. You know, a lot of times people say their kids are very smart, but then shelter them from information. We, we, chose to, we chose the opposite. We chose to involve them with everything because it was important for them to understand why we were doing what we we're doing. And we had levels of expectations of them because we, of what we were investing in. So we wanted a ROI on a return on investment on, <laughs> on their education. So we wanted them to be completely involved and they knew exactly what tuition cost was and how we were sacrificing to do that. I mean, I didn't get my Lambo. <laughs> I'm not just kidding. Or you're out here, right? <laughs> um, but I, and I also think, you know, that, um, when we had those conversations with them, it was also always talking about um, where they were going to go to college and to, mm. in the mindset. And, you know, that's one thing that um, I was very aware as a parent that I wanted to be involved. And, and so was Steve. And together we were a partnership. But it, we also, I also think you need to know yourself as a parent well enough to say, you know, I don't know about this, so maybe if I put my my sons or my children in that, I keep saying sons, in that environment where that's taken care of. And what I mean is at my at our son's um, high school, they had banners up of all these colleges, Ivy Leagues, all these colleges. So like our sons say, it wasn't if I was going to college, it was where, because it was always talked about at at their school mm -hmm. their high school because it was a prep school um, even the language that they use it was called instructors and colleagues and you choose your courses and so it was already putting them in that mindset of college so going to college wasn't going to be a big deal and it was um, an, um, an expectation of a prep school is like you're going to college and you met with your counselor and the counselor said what schools do you want to go to okay let's talk about and let's pick schools you don't have that necessarily at a public school. Um, it, recently, my um, one of my family members said they met with their counselor and the counselor said, oh, all colleges are good colleges. And it was like, what? Yes, okay, that's great, but it's not everybody gets a trophy. So there are colleges that are better and more fit, suited for your child. And I think private school um, does that, you know, and so it gave me and Steve a chance to kind of relax as a parent once we got them to the prep school mm -hmm. because we knew that school was going to take a vested interest in all of their students going to college. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, please feel free to leave any comments down below and ask those questions. Um, and not to say that, you know, the counselors in public school are not doing their jobs, but you, it's all of us share volume. Yeah. They're handling hundreds of, ki of kids as opposed to some private school maybe handling 30 40 kids so it's just it's a numbers game it's a numbers thing you know yeah. so you have you have these schools are packed they're, they're, these these people are you know my hat my hat goes off to them educators are great at both schools yeah. um you know counselors are great at so we're not saying that we're saying just sheer number game you know yeah. um they're loaded. they're yeah. loaded they're loaded down with a ton of kids being said the parents who are very involved tend to get more res response and more results out of those faculty at those schools because they're in their face more. The ones that sit back and, allow, and tell the school to handle that for them, those kids send, tend to slip through the cracks because of the parents who are involved are taking the time with the counselors and, and, and making sure they come up with a proper map and guide for their kids' future goals and needs. Feel free to reach out to us on all social media platforms at Ivy Bound LA on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Leave your comments below. Next week, we'll be talking about being intentional, having an intentional mindset with parenting. Until then, see you next week.